not seeing water on the inside of both of my headlights is almost enough to make me want to cry. Okay everyone, welcome back to the Tacoma Holic channel. Today I am super excited to announce that both of my headlights are dry and I'm going to share with you how I did it. Hopefully you'll never have to deal with the same kind of issue I am dealing with, but if you are, stay tuned and I'll show you how to dry these out and seal them from any future water incursion. This is the type of weather we've been having in Northern Virginia here for the past two or three weeks. And while it is certainly crappy, the what seems like daily rain in this morning fog and condensation is perfect for testing out my waterproofing on the driver's side headlight, which is now three weeks old. You can see obviously condensation built up on the outside, but as I wipe that off, you can see it is completely dry as a bone on the inside of the headlight, which is exactly what I've been looking for. Okay, everyone, so I am here in the dungeon here just to demonstrate. The first step in sealing the headlights, obviously, is to go ahead and get all of the water out. And in my case, you can see it's more than just your standard condensation buildup where you have like a light fogging on the inside of the lens. You can see I've got water droplets. You can see they're building up so much they even drip down. And hopefully it's going to show up on camera right here. I mean, look how much water is just pooling here. That is ridiculous. Of course, the first thing I've got to do is to go ahead and pour that water out since it'll take forever to dry. I do still have my projector in there, so I am going to go ahead and... I've got my plugs pulled off to the side here so those don't go get wet. I'm just going to go ahead and try to pour as much of this out as I can. There she goes. Look at that. <clears throat> the more of this water I can actually just pour out, the quicker the whole thing will actually dry out in a second. And the next, and by far the most technical phase of this process, involves simply just propping the headlight up. I'm going ahead and doing mine so you can see. This is the side marker where the bulb went. There's a hole right there. And this is where the turn signal and daytime running light is. There's a hole right there, so this involves, I went ahead and turned this upside down so they're low to the ground, because for mine, I will just be taking my manly heat gun, and if you don't have one of these, you can pick yours up from Revlon. Of course, this is just, in fact, a hair dryer. I'm going to be running mine on the warm setting, on the high to get the most velocity for the air. And all I'm really going to do is just prop this up. I've got a little tool here to get this off the ground a little so the output from the hair dryer is going to go directly in one opening, circulate in with the warm air, and then come out the other. A couple hours of this, and the inside of the headlight should be bone dry. So I'm going to do this for a few hours. It is Friday evening. And then when I go to bed, I'm actually going to swap out the hair dryer for just a regular fan because I'm just paranoid. I don't want to leave a heated device like this plugged in overnight. Even though this is just warm air, I'm not putting it on the hot setting because I don't want to risk damaging the paint or anything on the inside of the headlight, even though it'd probably be fine, but I've got some time, so I'm just going to run warm air through that until this is completely dry. If you're doing something similar, set up, and again, this is highly technical stuff, just make sure once you turn the hair dryer on, it is lined up as straight as possible with the larger opening for the daytime running light. And then once the hair dryer is on, just come over here and make sure you can feel with your finger that air is coming out of there so you get that circulation you need. We're good to go. Okay, everyone, so here is the headlight. Last night I had the hair dryer directly on it, flowing nice warm air through there for about six hours. And visually, I didn't see any water buildup on the inside of the headlight after doing that. But just to be safe, I went ahead and put a regular small fan on the headlight overnight. So it's got about 12 hours of constant airflow on it. So it should be completely dried out. If you're attempting to waterproof your headlight and you need to dry it out when it's warm outside and you have direct sunlight, then you could certainly just, once your headlight's removed like this, just leave it on your deck or something in direct sunlight. And I bet it'd probably just dry out in two hours anyway. But it's the middle of winter here for me in Northern Virginia, and it's been humid and rainy anyway, so I had to do mine on the inside. This stuff right here you see sort of sticking out between the clear of the headlight and the uh, the body, actually. This is the butyl sealer all the headlight manufacturers used for aftermarket stuff. And in my case, it just looks like 
enough wasn't used around the whole thing. Here you can see it's sticking out, so that's probably fine. But if you go along to here on the side, you can, this is actually the bottom of the headlight. You can see right there, and none is sticking out pretty much the whole length of this, so it just looks really uneven. It looks like there's a spot right there where there's nothing at all. Over here, I can actually get my fingernail down in there, so I will be filling all of this with regular silicone that you can get at any hardware store. Here's a couple tubes right here. This stuff's just a few bucks, so this stuff is waterproof. You know, it's used on windows and doors, so it should be fine for this headlight application. I did do the same exact thing to my driver's side headlight, and it's been three weeks now with very humid and rainy conditions here in Northern Virginia, and the inside of that headlight is still bone dry. All I'll be doing, I'll do like a little time lapse for you. I'm just going to take, put a nice thick bead of silicone here where the clear plastic of the outside piece meets the actual body of the headlight. You can see right here in this seam around the entire headlight and then getting my finger and just really getting it in there to make sure I get every single gap because that's probably where the water's coming in 99% of the time if you're getting leaky or condensed headlights. When you have the silicone bead on here and you start to smooth it in, don't be paranoid about making it look uh, pretty to the eye because this whole part of the headlight you're never going to see. It's only this front part here, so don't worry about uh, making it look, you know, beautiful like you're doing window trim or something like that. Just get it in there. Make sure it covers that line where both the front piece and the back piece meet. And at this point I've gone around the entire headlight with silicone. You can see that I've smoothed it in there, tried to get it in every tiny little crack I can find. At this point you definitely want to go around the entire headlight again and give it a thorough visual inspection. If you see a spot that looks like it doesn't have enough silicone, just go ahead and play it safe and add some more silicone to it while the headlight's removed. Because if you get this 99% sealed, well guess what? It's still going to leak and get water on the inside. So go ahead and do a thorough job here. Take your time. Exercise some patience. Once you're satisfied that you got silicone around the entire border of the front piece of the headlight with the body, then you're just going to let it air dry. This stuff cures pretty quickly, the one I bought. And we'll go ahead and put a link to it down below. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just set it on the floor and get a regular fan on it. And let this dry all day. And then slap this bad boy in tomorrow. It is now the next morning. Let the silicone dry overnight with a fan on it. You can see right there on the seam, nice and dry, and this stuff is still flexible, so it's not going to crack or anything, given the little vibrations you get when you're driving around. So the outside of the headlight should be sealed where the, the seam is between the body of the headlight and that front plastic piece, but we're not quite done yet. I do have custom HID retrofits that do have like the colored halo they go around the H actual HID inside of the housing. So this next part will not apply to you unless you have the same thing, but you can see right here, here are the two wires that come out from the halo and plug in so you can get that light. And it is going right through the rubber boot. So you can see, I just got some dielectric grease right here. And I spread that around just to seal up that opening. I did not use silicone, I suppose you could, but since silicone dries, I didn't want if I ever have to remove this for any reason, uh, the silicone might just make that more of a pain. So the dielectric grease should be good since after all it is used to help seal your electrical connections under the hood. If you have something like this, uh, just keep that in mind to make sure you seal up any potential point of access where water can get inside the headlight. For the next part, I did notice that a lot of uh, the manufacturers who make these aftermarket retrofits and everything, they actually take these small silica packets that, you know, anytime you buy shoes or electronics, there's usually a few of these stuffed in there. I was able to find a bunch of these smaller ones that are great for this application on Amazon, so I will link to that below. 
but they take a lot of those silica packets and actually they lift up this rubber boot which goes around your headlight bulb again specifically for HID retrofits and they pretty much jam as many of those silica packets in there as they can without of course distorting the rubber boot uh, so that doesn't prevent water from getting in with the silica packets on the inside of the rubber boot it's just sort of like a fail safe so any water that gets in from around the rubber boot should instantly be absorbed by those silica packets I've not seen anyone do this with regular halogen housings, so just be aware of that. I'm not sure if it would be a fire hazard in this case or not, but for the HIDs, at least seems pretty safe because that's what all the uh, aftermarket manufacturers seem to be doing. So now I'll just go ahead and loosen up the rubber boot and slap a few of those silica packets on the inside. This is actually on there pretty tight, so that is a good sign. If this was loose, that would probably just be evidence that water was getting in from this point as well. I'm going to tilt the camera so you can see. So there's a little empty space in there. That's where I'll be jamming the silica packets. And for the final part that is often overlooked, you will have, if you just have regular halogens, at this point you will have three large holes in the back of your headlight housing. One here for the side marker, one for the main headlight, high and low beams, and then the other for the turn signal and daytime running light. When you're putting your bulbs back in, make sure they're seated properly. Like if you've got your side marker light here, if you get it in there and there's any kind of play at all, just redo it and make sure it's in there tightly because obviously water can still get in there if the rubber gasket here is not firmly seated in there like it's supposed to be. So don't do all this other hard work and then just get lazy at the end and install the bulbs correctly because water will get in there just like that. I really hope you guys never have to deal with a leaky headlight like I did the past few weeks, months, etc. But if you do, I hope you found some useful information in the video and I hope you saw that it's not really that hard to get them resealed. Uh, so if you did get some useful information out of this video, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to hit the bell notification so you are notified every time I upload, which is twice a week. And please go ahead and share the video with your friends and family. Help me get the Tacomaholic name out there. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and I will see you in the next video.